uh, everybody. So uh, hello everyone. Ken Phelps here from the Daytona Regional Chamber and uh, welcome to our program, Real Deal Discussions on the Florida Small Business Emergency Loan Program. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items. If they're not already, please mute your microphones uh, to minimize the background noise and interference and that way everybody can hear uh, uh, adequately. If you have a question or comment at any point during the presentation, please uh, include it in the chat. We'll be keeping an eye on that and we'll get to as many questions as we can in the time allotted. Um, if you miss something, I shouldn't go uh, too boldly with this statement, but the plan is to record this and get it posted to our website after the fact. So if you missed something, you need to go back and watch it again, uh, we should be able to do that. So uh, my pleasure now to introduce our presenter uh, for today's webinar. Tom Daly is the director of the Florida Small Business Development Center located at Daytona State College. Uh, the SBDC provides no cost consulting, business intelligence and advanced training. And presently they are administering the state's emergency bridge loan program. So Tom, with that, you have the floor, please take it away. Excellent, thank you. And uh, hello everybody. I hope everybody's doing doing well and, and being safe out there. I know it's crazy times right now. Um, I'm assuming, Ken, you can see the screen? Correct, yes. Oh, okay, great. So uh, just a little bit of background. I've only got six slides here because I wanted to really kind of uh, leave the majority of the time uh, to maybe answer your questions. Um, there's a lot of craziness going out here. So just, to, I guess, to define the different relief packages, right? right now. Um, what I'm going to talk about um, mostly is the Florida, state of Florida bridge loan program that was put in place, not to be confused with the SBA programs that are also um, uh, huge in scope and obviously all over the news. And I can speak to some of those things, um, but I may not have your specific or, or specific answers to your questions, but hopefully I can give enough to, um, uh, to help you out a little bit. So, um, first and foremost, uh, the Florida Bridge Loan, uh, which is sponsored by the uh, Department of Economic Opportunity, um, what it came up with was a way to create just money to get through. It's not like a, a typical loan where it would have a long-term period of time uh, to help build your business. It's not like that. It's just that every, recognizing that so many businesses and industries absolutely watched their revenues drop to virtually zero overnight. And we need those businesses to survive. So this was just um, a very short term initiative to try to get people through. Um, and what that meant was that there were these loans, uh, bridge loans of 25,000 or 50,000. And in some very, very rare instances up to 100,000, um, with special approval, but most of them are 25 to 50. They are 12 months at zero interest. There's no cost to apply for it. Uh, there's no interest expense associated with it, but it must be paid within that 12 month period. Otherwise you're technically in default and a 12% um, annual interest is gonna apply. So you don't wanna do that. And I'll get into what that means um, a longer term when we talk about the, uh, the SBA idle loan. Um, it's lower credit stringency, in fact, seven or 620. Um, in some cases, maybe even lower if there's a, an explainable credit event. Um, there's no collateral associated with these loans, and, but these loans are only for profit businesses. So uh, this particular program, our nonprofits can't really take advantage of. And then uh, one of the things that I was going to, I alluded to was the idle loan, SBA loans that you're applying for maybe in concert with this, those proceeds can be used to satisfy this loan. So making this look hard, sorry guys, all kinds of technical issues. <laughs> so what we ended up having to do was that Initially, there was a disaster um, loan.org site and understand that most of these loans that were put together, even as it applies to the SBA, were really from the template that we used for hurricanes. So while those are also big events, nowhere near the size of this where it affects everybody and for a much longer period of time. So the Florida disaster loan.org site went online immediately, I think March 16th was the date. and absolutely from the get-go got clobbered. So the site went down, could not handle the volume, and so people were left out in the cold. 
Immediately, DEO set up a site. They had been working on a Salesforce backend to try to manage this, and they thought it would work. But the same thing happened. When the volume hit, it absolutely crushed it, and so it slowed down the process dramatically. So faced with the prospect of either people not seeing these loans when we knew they needed them immediately or finding a better way, um, they actually deployed the SBDC. So we ended up um, taking over to manually walk these um, bridge loans through the process. So what ends up happening is when people reach us, we blasted it out to our current client base. Um, we've told everybody that I talk to, Ken, the, uh, the Chambers um, career source, uh, the, the Volusia Economic Development uh, Department, everybody to just let us know if you're interested in this bridge loan, reach out to us directly. At that point, we have a manual application that we can email to you. You fill that out. I think it probably takes about 10, 20 minutes maximum to put it all together. And then there's some required documentation, as you can imagine. And it's pretty simple. It's usually a couple of years of business tax returns, a couple of years of individual tax returns, um, a 2020 P&L, if you have a year to date, just something that the loan committee can kind of look at uh, to figure out is the business sound? Is it viable? Will it do just fine after the crisis? And can this loan be paid back? So those are the most important things. Um, once I get all that documentation, I then upload it to uh, First Florida Corporation um, in Tallahassee, and they run a credit check. About 48 hours later, I get that credit check back. I assemble all the paperwork that's been given to me, and I write a memo based on my analysis and my dialogue with the client uh, to let the loan committee understand what they're looking at when they look at those documents. Because just taking a second, the loan committee is a group of volunteers. They're local bankers, uh, business leaders, people that have real financial acumen. They're the ones that are reviewing these loan processes, and they're reviewing uh, usually 11 to 14 loans per day. So they're doing this on their own time. It's uh, happening every single day. There's no compensation for them. They just have the collective interest like we all do to make sure our small businesses survive this crisis. So that loan committee, after I write the memo to them, assemble that package, I then forward it over to them via Dropbox. They then review it. Um, they decide uh, approval or denial, and I can say that all of the companies that I've been able to put through that have a viable business, that are doing well and have reasonable credit are all getting approved. So once they get approved, I'm allowed to then verbally tell them, you're approved, it's gonna take a little bit longer just so you know, and then that whole package gets emailed back to FFC. They create a loan closing documentation that typically you would do in person, but in this case, under these circumstances, it's being emailed back to me. Then I email it to the client with instructions on how to execute that virtually or via email. And then I receive it back. I then upload it for the last time to FSC as a completed loan. And within 48 hours, funds are electronically transferred to the client. So I know that sounds like a ton of activity and it is, but we are putting these through. In fact, the last count I saw across Florida, I think there's something like $8.8 .8 .8 million in loans that have already been um, uh, put through. Um, but the clock is ticking. That original uh, injection that the state of Florida put out there was $50 million. So doing the math uh, in your head, I think you can imagine that that money will run out pretty quickly. I've heard rumor that there may be an additional injection of money, but we've not heard that right now. So if, if it's a bridge loan that you think you need, uh, then I would say move on it very quickly. Again, just to review the documentation that needs to be done, and I always reiterate this once I send an email to a new client, is that basically it's 2017 and 2018 business and individual tax returns. If the company wasn't in business before 2018, that's fine, 28 and 2019. And again, you may be saying to yourselves, well, I had an extension on my business taxes, so what if I don't have 2019? Perfectly okay, just share your P&L with us. Just any kind of um, financial document that a loan committee could actually go through and figure out, is this a viable business? Um, I do request that you give us a very short, sweet, to the point, 
explanation of the loan need and maybe a little bit of background on why your business is doing well and will do well um, after we get through this crisis. Um, annual report, if you provide it, great. Otherwise, I just go to SunBiz and get it for you. Um, if you're trying to explain how well your business is doing or how you think it's going to do fine after we get past all of this, some other document examples that might help you tell that story would be an accounts receivable aging report, you know, the clients that owe you money that you're doing business with, maybe your customer list of the people that you're targeting, anything like that that just kind of tells a really positive story. Um, essentially, you're just giving me crib notes so I can put together a very um, compelling memo, if you will. Um, also, obviously, if there's anything on the credit report that should come back that says, okay, we had an issue two years ago and it's still out there, uh, just explain it to us. And remember that a credit report is nothing more than a snapshot of behavior. It doesn't doesn't go to any way of characterizing a person or a business. It's just simply a snapshot. It, it, it doesn't have a personality. Um, what we need to do is just be able to explain to the loan committee, hey, we did a, um, we did a capital purchase back in this year and it showed that we were unprofitable. Um, we had a dispute with a client and it shows a credit anomaly. Any of those things, just give me the explanation and that in and of itself is certainly not gonna prevent a loan from going through. So that's the bridge loan. And before I move into just the very short um, SBA or what I know of the SBA part, um, and I have a tendency to speak very fast and I'm aware of that, what questions can I answer for you guys specifically about the bridge loan? Was I amazing? Well, I don't know if it is, um... The technical difficulties we were having previously that's limiting my ability to see the chat, but it's, <laughs> I, I have commented in the chat about asking questions there, and I'm not okay. seeing anything currently. So uh, with that, I'll let you take that back. Okay. All right. Well, I'll continue. The, the other two programs that are receiving a whole lot of, um, of, of press... Uh, our press is really out there 24 hours a day and not always completely factual, um, but this is real. So the emergency injury disaster loan from the SBA, again, is completely modeled on the hurricane types of disasters that we've had in the past. Um, it's just on steroids now because just about every small business out there is going to be applying for this. And you can see that that's the, the standard um, hyperlink that's there. You can only apply for this online. So there's nothing um, we at the SBDC can do to help it along or even see it after you've applied. It doesn't help in this instance for you to go to your bank. You strictly have to get in line um, on this website. And, and I am absolutely, my guidance to all of our clients is please um, apply for this because actually it, it's got a long-term process and you may not feel like you absolutely need it right now, but you may need it if this goes on another four weeks. So I would absolutely recommend that you apply for it. Let's say you get approved in six weeks and you feel like you no longer need it. You don't have to close on the loan, but I would, I, if I'm a small business and I was at one point, so I kind of have your best interest at heart is I'm going to want as many financial assets at my disposal as I get back in the game uh, business-wise because it's going to be a very intense remainder of the year to get back on track. So I need those financial assets to, to succeed and grow. So I'm going to probably apply for everything. These loans, as you can see, are way more conventional. Um, they can be up to $2 million, depending on the size of your, of your company, 3.75%. Uh, really attractive low rates, and the terms can be up to 30 years. And as I mentioned before, you could use the proceeds from this to satisfy the bridge loan. Um, so the two kind of work hand in hand. It has a much lower credit stringency even than the bridge loan. In fact, the number that we've heard is down to as low as 40, uh, 475, which is pretty unheard of. So again, they're really kind of discounting personal credit when they're, they're uh, awarding these loans. Um, these funds come directly from the U.S. Treasury. They do not come from your bank. Um, so your bank can't really play a role in this at all. Uh, they may be the place that uh, ends up taking your, your, um, your payments, your coupon payments, but they are not going to have any role in, in the disbursement of funds. 
Um, we can't say it, as I mentioned, people keep sending us emails and, and I'm happy to take them and try to explain what we can and can't do. And, and at least what I've heard from the rumor mill, but um, we have no way of seeing how your loan is doing. Um, again, I, I, I fully say that I think you should apply for both, but that's really between um, you and uh, your financial uh, consultants as well. And this one is different from the bridge loan in that nonprofits can apply as well. And then finally is the PPP program, which is the, um, the payroll program that everybody is applying to, um, and they should. This is the one that can turn into a grant, um, but you must make sure that you do it carefully. The website, the SBA website actually has a copy of the application and it's fairly simple. I mean, it's not too hard to put together. So you could probably do it yourself, but if you have an accountant, um, help uh, have them help you uh, figure out your average payroll over the next six months. And then you must, and I underline with two underlines, must apply through your bank for this. Um, this is the only way it works and it's the only way proceeds are gonna happen. Unfortunately, the media last week made it sound like, sound like payouts were gonna start to happen on Friday. And I, speaking to our banker friends, they were not even ready for this. None of this um, CARES Act, which was basically legislation that was put together over a period of two weeks, you can imagine none of that infrastructure um, had, was put in place. And so they're scrambling to make that happen. But in the meantime, the PPP is gonna be the biggest um, portion of the CARES Act immediately. It should apply to just about all small businesses and you'll want to apply for it, but go through your bank. Um, if you look at it, the, the idle loan and the paycheck protection uh, program, I put a little graphic up there that kind of gives you an idea of how do the two work? And, and uh, th I stole this directly from SBDC in Texas. I thought they did a great job at this, but it gives you an idea of how, what the two different things are. Uh, PPP, if you've already talked to your banks, they probably have told you we are working with our clients first and then others that might need to apply, we'll get to them eventually. So uh, that's why it makes sense to absolutely go to your own personal bank and make sure that they're applying for, uh, for you on your behalf. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, we're hearing things too, but I don't broadcast it out until I know it's confirmed either from one of our banker friends, from the SBA, which is really not saying a whole lot right now, or any other experience that I hear from a client that has had some sort of dialogue with their bank or in um, uh, doing these loans. Going back to review again on the bridge loans, I have full control over that. I know where it's at in the system. I can coach people if they don't have the right documentation to go find the things that they need. And I think here in Volusia, don't quote me exactly, but I believe that I've gotten through about I think maybe around 350,000, maybe $400,000 in loans. Those have already been paid out. So um, that's pretty awesome. And that's just gonna go to um, a lot of companies that real, we need them to stay in business. We need them to employ employees. We need them to grow after this crisis because Volusia, we were sitting right on the cusp of being one of the fastest growing, most rocking areas of the country. And we will again, we just gotta get past this really difficult time. And so, Ken, that's really kind of what I have in a nutshell, unless people have um, specific questions. All right. Well, I'm going to see if I can reclaim the host on this and see if I can get uh, yeah, let, me, let me stop sharing here. Functionality back on this. All right. I think I've got that. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for... Tom and I can't, again, I can't tell. We, I had to reboot my computer and there was all kinds of uh, technical difficulties going on. So I'm not sure if I'm seeing the whole of chat as I normally would in, as, in a host setting or not. So um, if you have any questions, uh, you may uh, type them in the chat or uh, given that I may or may not be seeing all of those, um, you are welcome to um, raise your hand and I believe I can see that functionality and we'll unmute you so you can ask the question uh, if need be. Um, Tom, while we're giving folks a minute to think about that, let me ask, um, in the applications that you've processed for the Bridge Loan Program, what have been the most common things that an applicant has needed to 
tweak or has been missing that you had to provide some coaching for them on through the process? Tom, hold on a second. For some reason, I, you're muted, and now I cannot unmute you. I'm back. Can you hear me? There you go. Very wow. good. All right. All right. How much of that did you hear? Uh, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> start, okay. start from the top. Okay. Well, it was a great question. Um, typically, we're just missing a document. So I have 2018 and 2017 business uh, uh, tax returns, but I, I have only one year of uh, individual. So I'll have to go back and do it. And with so many attachments flying around, that's totally to be expected. So I just kind of say, I just need this one, send it to me. Um, the other thing would be that let's say one year looked totally fine, good, good revenue and you know, decent profit, what have you, the next year, looks like revenue grew pretty nicely and then all of a sudden we see a massive loss. That's not an issue either. There's probably something going on. Either we did a, an accounting maneuver for somebody's benefit or something strange happened. Um, let's say you were a hotel and you took some pretty significant hurricane damage last year. Great. Say, yo, we had to do like a $20,000 repair that wasn't covered by uh, insurance. Good. That's what I need. So when I put the loan uh, committee document together, I'll just kind of tell that story and say, yeah, all's well. It looks like they're feeling pretty good about next year. Once we get past this, um, we had this one anomaly that happened in 2018. It's a one-time event. Boom. There we go. So it's really that. It's typically, I don't have enough explanation to show me why there's a small inconsistency in the financials or I just didn't have a document. Uh, generally, if people have something uh, that's an anomaly on their, um, on their personal credit, they'll usually tell me, oh, by the way, I had this happen and that's going to show up in my credit report. Great. That's perfect. Um, that's, that's it. The only ones that I've seen, honestly, that haven't gone through would be that we have year over year over year of losses. Um, the company is just, it was having a tough time before the crisis. And you know, revenue is not growing, something like that. The bank is gonna feel very nervous, and, and we all do as Florida taxpayers, about that money being repaired, re repaid rather. But that has not, I think I've seen two that have not been approved of mine. I understand we're doing this across the state. I'm only doing Volusia. And, and really when we sent them up, I, I pretty much felt like it wouldn't get approved just based on what I was saying seeing rather and it's you know they're 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 putting them through even the ones that are like eh, maybe but they have yeah. a good story to tell yeah they're going through yeah that was one of the first things i learned professionally from a budgeting standpoint uh from a vice president i was working for he said hey variances in a budget are not necessarily a bad thing unexplained variances are <laughs> very bad <laughs> so you can't exactly. explain where it's coming from uh yeah. which speaks to your the first part of your answer uh, we have one question that's come up um, uh, that one of our attendees is a lot of friends in the salon industry um, and kind of asking thoughts on most of the service providers work on, uh, on a commission base uh, within, the, within the salon. Your thoughts on should they apply for uh, reemployment assistance versus waiting for the salon to perhaps get a, a bridge loan or uh, something through the PPP that would pay them? Yeah, so that's a business decision. Um, if if you think that, it, I, I guess a lot of those folks are 1099, I would assume. Um, and, and even if they're not, if, they, if they're on salary and you are keeping them on payroll, the PPP program is going to pay you to keep them on. So that might be the best route. And again, while that's a loan based on a six-month average of your payroll, so long as you keep them on your payroll, and even your, um, your building expenses, all the things that are required to employ somebody, that's gonna turn into a grant, which means it's a forgiven loan. So, so far as it applies to your payroll, that may be your best bet. And if you're feeling liquid, like you don't necessarily need to take on a lot of other debt, perhaps the bridge loan isn't necessary, but the PPP is gonna allow you to keep people employed and get you through. 
Um, if you need capital because you need working capital, you got to pay the mortgage, you have to pay the utilities. There's just not enough li liquidity sitting in the checking account to be able to do those things. You're probably a candidate for a bridge loan, particularly if you're not feeling like there's a lot of reserve there and you need money immediately. If you think it's going to take a while to kind of get it back to go get those clients back over a period of time, even post crisis, you might need a little bit longer term liquidity and maybe paying off a bridge loan might take some, make, take some financial gyrations. I would absolutely do the idle loan at the same time. So it just, it really is going to depend on what your financial situation is, um, how fast you think you can recover after the crisis. So it's a lot of soul searching. Again, I kind of default back to when I was a, a business owner myself and I owned a food business. Um, I'm probably at that point, I'm taking the bridge loan if I can get it. And I'm absolutely doing the idle because being a, being a, <laughs> being a business owner always means you are super optimistic. And I was always over optimistic. So I always say, however good I think it's going to be, take away 50% of that and then say that might be reality. So I want to have those financial assets so I can maneuver because I'm not trying to be a naysayer, but imagine we get through all this and mother nature decides it's going to throw us a hurricane in the fall or something crazy like that. We're going to want to make sure that if it's going to knock out another one of my legs, I still want to be standing. So having financial assets, even if I pay them back quicker than I thought I would, is going to give me the ability to maneuver. So I'm not a financial analyst. I'm just kind of sharing how I felt when I was a business owner. I, I, yeah, agreed. And I don't know that it got a lot of play in the uh, news when it came out, but I read something the other day that their uh, forecasts are anticipating an act, a more active than normal tropical season, which I kind of put my head in my hands and shook my head. That, that would be the last thing we'd need here in yeah. Florida. I thought it was bad when we had Matthew followed by Irma within about 10 months of each other. So hopefully that uh, uh, we get spared that uh, in this coming season. I think we'd be due for a break uh, across the country and the world, quite frankly. Yeah, no doubt. All right. Uh, last opportunity for any questions from, the, uh, from our attendees. Uh, we've got Tom here for just a moment. And Tom, uh, uh, while we've got a minute here, thanks so much for taking some time. I know you have been uh, uh, deluged with applications and work in the last uh, two to three weeks. And so uh, thanks so much for taking the time and apologies for the technical difficulties starting out. Yeah, no problem. We're, we're happy to do this. And I think you recorded this. So um, feel free to share it with anybody. Um, uh, right now, we're not doing a lot of business consulting uh, just because there's only so much throughput. But um, Maggie, my counterpart, who is the SBDC banking expert, she's the one that runs the loan committee. And Kathy, who's always in the background, who does all the real work of the SBDC, I'm just an empty suit. Um, those folks are doing so much work and we're happy to. Anything we can do to help um, just makes our heart swell. Uh, but in the meantime, we're not able to do a whole lot of regular business consulting. Apologies there. We'll get back to our real jobs. But uh, for now, um, we're handling the volume as best we can. And, uh, you know, anything you need, I'm, I'm always phone call away, cell phone away, email, text. Um, it may take me an hour or two to get back to you, but you, I will give you a response. Okay, very good. Well, in the event that somebody asked a question and I just can't see it to ask it, my apologies. Um, we, uh, as this has been changing and evolving, uh, certainly the, the information uh, we're getting from all sources is, is being updated almost minute by minute sometimes. I'm sure, you know, Tom's dealing with the same thing uh, as, as directives change and processes and all that kind of stuff. So uh, the possibility we may uh, revisit this conversation uh, in the very near future to to go back over some things is, you know, maybe there's a second influx of, uh, of funding that's uh, provided or something like that. So uh, rest assured, we will get everybody as much uh, as much information as we can. So uh, with that, seeing no further questions, Tom, thanks again for your time uh, and the work that you're doing to help support small businesses all throughout the area. It's definitely, uh, th these are trying times, but uh, definitely together we'll get through it. We will. All right, Ken, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Very good. Thanks everyone for attending and we'll see you again real soon.